What is up everybody? Got a really cool video for you today on a topic called BM25. Looks like a really weird string of characters and numbers, but it turns out it is one of, if not the most important feature used in modern search engines in order to make sure that the documents or items you're getting back whenever you execute some kind of query or search are textually relevant to your query. But hold on for a second. When we state the problem that way, our mind goes back to one of the previous videos we had, which is trying to solve the exact same problem, namely the video on TF-IDF. In that video, which is linked below, you don't need to have watched it, but the idea there is that given some query, let's just make things real for a second and say we're building a search engine for animal lovers. So the query could be cat. We're saying given you put the query cat and we want to give the score, the textual matching score of some document or some maybe product that exists to your query, we're going to use TF-IDF, which is simply the multiplication of TF, which is term frequency of this query in that document, and IDF, which is just a function of the query and tells you about how unique is this query among all documents. So we can fill in some of the blanks here. The TF, as we learned before, is the popularity, let's just shorten that as pop, the popularity of this query in this document. So how many times does this query appear in this document? And the IDF is the uniqueness, the uniqueness of that query across all of the documents that exist in your corpus. For example, this is what makes sure that stop words like a, the, and very common words don't get a really high score because they might have a very high term frequency. They occur all the time in all of these documents, but because they occur in all of the documents, they're not really special to any given document. And so we wouldn't boost the score too much based on that. However, for the term cat, that wouldn't exist in every single document we have. That would be more specialized to a very specific set of documents. And so its uniqueness or its IDF here would be higher. So what's wrong with this? Why are we trying to come up with something else that's trying to solve this exact same problem whenever in data science or otherwise, we're trying to complicate something or have an alternative solution to something? We better have a good reason because that's just gonna increase the complexity of our entire problem space. So what is the reason we need something called BM25, which we haven't defined yet, versus this TF-IDF, which we already know well and love and understand exactly how it works? Well, we can start understanding a couple of the issues with TF-IDF via these examples here. The first being, let's say you have two documents, document A and document B. Let's say the IDFs for this term are the same in both, of course, because it's only dependent on the query cat or dog or whatever you put in. But let's say that that query cat appears one time in document A, so its term frequency is equal to one. But let's say that word cat appears 10 times, 10 times more often in document B. Now under TF-IDF, we would basically just say, you know what, document B is a far better match to your query than document A because your query the word cat appears 10 times instead of just one time. But what if I give you an extra piece of information? And let's see if that starts changing your mind on which of these is the more relevant document. Let's say that the length in words of document A, which I signify by these double bars containing A or double bars containing B for the length in words of document B. Let's say for A, it's 10 words in that document, just 10 words. And one out of those 10 words is cat. Document B, however, is 1,000 words, and 10 of those 1,000 words are the word cat. Now, does this change your mind? Well, it should at least get you start thinking down the path of, this is kind of an interesting situation because although the word cat only appears once in document A, there's just, as a user, less to look at in document A. It's more concise, it's denser information. If we want to quantify it, we can say one out of 10 or 10% 10 of the words that I have to look at are relevant to my query. However, if we look at document B and we do the same calculation, then it's actually 10 times it occurs, but I have to look at 1000 words in that document to find those 10 words I care about. So that's going to be 10 over 1000, which is going to be just 1%. So in some sense, even though the term frequency is higher for document B, the richness or the density or just how efficient document A is at representing your query, at containing your query is much, much higher. And so I would argue, and I think many other people would argue as well, that you know what, I'd actually prefer getting document A back instead of document B, but TF-IDF is not going to capture that. It's just blindly going to say, you know what, document B contains the word cat 10 times, I'm going to multiply it by 10, and you're going to get a higher score, and I'm going to put that document higher 
in my list. So that's issue number one, that we want to address with something that is better than TFIDF. There's another issue, however, that we want to address, and we can do that by taking the partial derivative of TFIDF with respect to TF. Remember that partial derivatives are just asking for, if I change TF by a little bit, how does my overall score, TFIDF, change? And it's pretty easier because it's just a multiplication of two terms. So the partial derivative of TFIDF with respect to TF is just equal to IDF. It doesn't really matter that it's equal to IDF. The main point I wanted to get across here is that it is not a function of TF. And why is that important? The fact that the derivative of TFIDF with respect to TF has nothing to do with the term frequency at all means that for every unit increase in TF, so for every additional word I include in a document that matches your query, I'm just getting a constant reward of whatever IDF happens to be. You add one more word, you get one more quantity of IDF. You add one more word after that that matches my query, you get another constant unit of IDF. Now, that doesn't really make sense because if I have, let's say, one instance of the word cat, and then I go from one to two, that should be a pretty monumental leap. I'm matching two times instead of one time, basically doubling the amount of matches that I have in a document. That should give me a big boost in whatever my overall score is going to be called. But if I have 100 occurrences of the word cat of your query in my document, and again, I have the same incremental increase going from 100 to 101. Does that really make that document the same amount more relevant than it was going from the 1 to 2 case? Well, no, there needs to be some kind of marginal returns to scale here. Something that says that if you have very few occurrences, then every extra occurrence should get lots of points. But if you already have tons of occurrences, like as a user, I'm not going to care if a document has 100 versus 101 but I might care a lot if it has one versus two occurrences of your query. And so the two issues, which are translated now as goals in this better metric we're gonna come up with, eventually called BM25, is going to be to improve the TF part of TFIDF so that it has diminishing returns to the term frequency. Basically just means that the more and more and more matching terms you add, yes, you're gonna get more points, but you're not gonna get the same amount of extra points the further you go. You're gonna get less and less and less and less extra points. And the other issue was the first issue we looked at, which is that there should be some penalty baked into this TF part for long documents. So you can't just go arbitrarily just adding more and more words that match my query. We call this keyword stuffing, which is a term I'm sure you're familiar with, where some document on the internet will just put the word data science like 5,000 times in order to get the higher in the rankings. And if we were just using TFIDF, we would be falling prey to that. But if we're using this improved metric and we're able to solve this problem, then we will see that the term frequency goes up, but we'll also be having some kind of factor that's gonna punish for the length of the document. And so hopefully those effects will cancel out such that we're rewarding documents who are able to capture those matching terms in a lot fewer words overall. And that is where we are now ready to show the form of BM25. And this form looks a little bit complicated, and of course we're going to break it down and understand exactly how it works. But I think this is one of those cases where it is helpful to understand where did this term, where did this naming BM25 come from? Because that helps kind of demystify or take some pressure off of us as we explain this formula. So the BM just stands for best matching, pretty good marketing there. So there's just saying this is the best matching function. And you know what? It did become the best matching function. And the 25 is the part that we really care about here and taking some pressure off of us understanding this because this is the 25th iteration. This is the 25th version of this function. What that means is that there were 24 other versions that looked very different or just a little bit different from this final version that was settled on which means that we don't need to look at this and fully try to understand its structure and say, why is there a plus one here? Why is there a minus sign here? Well, it's because they tried lots and lots and lots of different things. In other words, this was developed experimentally rather than theoretically. Well, actually it was a little bit of both. But what that basically means is that we don't need to assign any extra pressure onto ourselves to understand the intricacies of every little part of this formula. Instead, what we really care about, and what we'll do for the remainder of this video, is understand how changing certain things in this formula, called BM25, are going to change the overall score BM25, and most importantly, see if that solves the two issues we had with TFIDF. 
And so this is the form of BM25. I'm going to go ahead and explain it pretty slowly, but then we'll go and break it all down. So the first part luckily does not change at all. It's the same thing, the IDF of this query. So BM25, just like TFIDF, is a function of the query you put in and some document we're trying to score. So the first part, the IDF part, which you see here, just remains the exact same. It's the TF part that we're gonna do a lot more engineering on, which is going to try to solve these problems, try to meet these goals here. So the numerator here is going to be the same TF, the same term frequency of this query as it appears in this document. Then we multiply that by K plus one. More on what this K is later, but in a nutshell, it's just a free parameter that whoever is engineering this search engine is allowed to change to fine tune the ranking of the documents that they want. So again, we don't need to ascribe too much importance to exactly what this K is. I'll give you a range of typical Ks that are used in the industry. In the denominator here, we again have the term frequency of the query and document. So it's gonna become very, very important that the TF part appears both in the numerator and the denominator because it's crucially that structure that's going to solve one of our issues. Hint, hint, the diminishing returns to scale. But we'll get to that in a moment. Then here we do plus k, again, the same k that was up here, this free parameter, times one minus b. b is also a free parameter. We'll have more to say on that in just a couple seconds. Plus the same b times this theta. What is this theta? This theta is going to be equal to the length of this document, length of this document that we're considering at the moment, divided by the average length of all of the documents in the corpus. So this is basically a ratio that tells you how much longer is this document compared to the average document that exists in your corpus. For example, if the average document in your corpus has 10 words and this document has 10 words, then this ratio is gonna be equal to one, which basically says that, you know what, it's about the same length as the average document in your corpus. If this document has 1,000 words, then we're gonna do 1,000 divided by 10, which says it's 100 times bigger than the average document in your corpus. And I'm sure you've already tied this back to issue number one, which is that we want this new formulation to give penalties to documents the longer and longer and longer they get. And it's exactly through this form by which that's going to happen. And of course, we're gonna break it down, but you can already see why this is a penalty. K and B are positive numbers. And so because this theta thing appears in the denominator, the bigger and bigger and bigger you make theta, which means the longer and longer this document gets relative to all the other documents in the corpus, denominator gets bigger. We know that in a fraction, when denominator gets bigger, the entire fraction gets smaller. And because this fraction is BM25, we have this negative, this inverse relationship with increasing document lengths and the overall score, everything else held constant. So now let's go ahead and fully break down BM25. And we're gonna do that the same way that I like to break down most formulas that overwhelm me at first and I don't really understand what's going on. And that is by taking partial derivatives. Part of this video is me trying to convince you all that just take partial derivatives of formulas that look really intimidating. And the partial derivative formulation might also look a little bit intimidating, but all you're really looking for is how does the form of the derivative change if I increase the thing which I took the derivative with respect to. And that'll be more clear as we do these two examples. So before we go into the partial derivatives, I wanna again mention that this k and this b that we just looked at in the formulation are free parameters. So whoever is designing the search engine is allowed to change that to fine tune the exact ranking they're looking for. But typically as a starting point, K is typically chosen in the range of 1.2 to two, and B is typically set as 0.75. But of course, these are not hard and fast rules. You're allowed to change these things to fit your needs. So now let's go ahead and take those partial derivatives. The first thing is we're gonna say, how does this thing, the still kind of mysterious thing that I'm not sure if I trust it or understand what's going on. Let me take the derivative of that BM25 thing with respect to T. I've done a little bit of shorthand here because I'm working on a small piece of paper, but T is my shorthand for the term frequency. I is my shorthand for IDF, okay? So if I take the derivative of BM25, then I get this formula here. So I didn't show the intermediate steps, but you can trust that we get this formula here. This still looks kind of complicated. How did this actually help us? Well, what we can do now is we can say, how does this derivative change? If I were to increase t, as complicated as this looks, t only appears in a single place in this formula, in the denominator here. Then I increase the denominator, which brings down the overall fraction. So what that means is that the higher and higher and higher and higher term frequency, the lower and lower and lower and lower the derivative is getting. 
We can show this derivative has to be positive, partially because k and b are positive numbers. So the derivative here has two key properties. First, it's always going to be positive. So the more and more terms you're adding that are matching this person's query, the more points, of course, I have to give you for that. But it has diminishing returns to scale, which is exactly what we wanted. What that means mathematically is that the more and more terms you're matching, the lower and lower, the closer to zero that this derivative is actually going to get. And so we can draw that here. Always a positive relationship, but the more and more terms you add matching this person's query, the flatter and flatter and flatter this derivative is going to get. So those points are captured exactly here. Positive relationship to the term frequency, but diminishing returns to that term frequency. So it exactly did solve that issue number two that we were looking at. So we can put a check mark here. Does it solve issue number one? Are we giving more punishments to documents that are longer and longer? We already kind of showed this, but we can show it more formally by taking the derivative of this BM25, not by term frequency here, but by theta instead, theta being that ratio of how long is this document compared to the average document. Again, we can work that out. These steps are not shown here, but you can work this out for yourself. And again, we can see that theta only appears in one place here, again in the denominator. But the key thing here to know is that there's a negative sign out front. The rest of the stuff is all positive, so this derivative, unlike the one before, is going to be a negative relationship to that theta. So we have a negative relationship to theta, so BM25 has a negative relationship to theta, but it has also diminishing returns to that theta. We can see that again, if you increase theta in the denominator, the whole denominator goes up, which means the entire fraction, in terms of magnitude, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so we're basically getting the opposite situation here. Always a negative relationship, but that punishment gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so we can see going back to this page here that we also solved issue number one via this thing we call BM25. And so now we can see exactly why this is an improvement over TFIDF. And I know I say this in many videos, but I think I'll just never stop saying it, which is that anytime you have something more complicated, if you have a more complicated formula or solution to the same problem as something which had a much simpler form, you always, always, always need to ask these questions about what are the issues that it's trying to solve. This is no doubt harder to understand, more complicated, more computationally intensive than this very simple form here, so we better get some better performance, some better behavior out of it. And we've shown exactly what those better behaviors are here. And so now, to close the video, what we can do is go back to this issue we were having here and say that TFIDF would have given document B preference over document A. But now if we plug in all of these formulas into BM25, then we get that document A gets a BM25 score of 1. And document B, getting all those penalties for the long document, is going to get a BM25 score of 0.2. So in this case, via BM25, we would actually prefer document A to document B, which is exactly what we wanted. And so that's it, folks. Hopefully you learned something about BM25. This is truly one of those features that is used in most modern search engines and truly does do an exceptional job of basic text matching on which people build on top of and improve and tune these parameters and whatnot. So if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.